Warner Brothers is releasing an origin story for the Joker that's completely unrelated to anything that they've ever done before in the comics, and at first everyone was rightfully skeptical about it, but then we saw the trailer, and it looks epic. And so it received the Golden Lion Award at the Venice Film Festival, where the film actually also received an eight-minute standing ovation. It's been so critically acclaimed that people are now saying that it could even win Oscars, but the left doesn't like this movie. In fact, they actually resent it, and the reason for that is that they don't want a story for, quote, lonely white boys to relate to, because the film explores themes of feeling displaced in society, embracing nihilism, feeling as if you failed at everything, which are all issues that are severely affecting the men in this country. If you don't believe me, take a look at the suicide rates. 78% of them are men. Evidently, the left doesn't want these issues talked about. I mean, why would they? Men are the oppressors, so who cares if they feel displaced in society? The future is female, don't you remember? John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. While on the topic of clowns, I want to quickly touch on another movie that's about a clown because It Chapter 2 is in theaters now, and the left is mad about that as well. For those of you that missed out on this very important story from a couple years ago, basically after the first installment of It came out two falls ago, the left spontaneously decided that Pennywise is a gay icon and also that he's in a relationship with the Babadook, who's another horror movie monster. And they like to do this. They really just like to extrapolate upon a character's sexuality, like, hey, uh, Pennywise is gay now. Hey, Captain America is gay now, regardless of the fact that sexuality literally has nothing to do with the story. They insist upon rebranding all of these characters as gay, and the reason for that is that it allows them to victimize themselves really well. People are attached to these characters, they are attached to the stories, and so when someone decides that, well, actually, um, this character is gay now, or this character should be gay, or it would be better if this character were gay, it's like, no, wait a minute, why? Like. How would that improve a story that exists independently of that? What is the benefit of compromising the integrity of a story that everyone already likes for what it is? Why don't you just go make your own characters? Then you can have them be gay and their little gay stories. And the response is, oh, you don't want Captain America to be gay simply for the sake of being gay? You're a homophobe. I told you that I'm oppressed. They'll never be satisfied because let's say they do actually go make their own movies and the characters are gay. Um, the problem that you're going to have now is you're going to have to achieve a balance within that story to where the characters are gay enough for you to feel that gay people are being adequately represented, but not too gay to where that's now the focus of the story because if that's the focus of the story, it's going to isolate people because the vast majority of people just can't relate to that and so we've seen gay characters that have done this well before I think Oscar from The Office is a good example because he was gay but that wasn't central to his character he still had problems with an, um, an incompetent boss he had problems with intolerable co-workers he had an unappreciated genius to him and so these are all things to which everyone can relate but the radical left is never going to be able to successfully achieve this balance because they want a character's gayness to be explicit so as to normalize it and or upset some viewers, which then enables them to play the victim card. So what they do instead is just try to take characters that are already successful and popular and just make them gay. And then they want to force you into defense like, oh, well, what's wrong with the character being gay? Hmm. And the response to that is, what the hell is wrong with the character being straight? Or in the case of Pennywise, the clown, like asexual. I mean, it, that's technically the monster's name. He exists basically just to eat and kill things. I read the book when I was 14. I don't really remember him having any sexual motivations. But anyways, basically what's happened is some leftists actually went and saw the second chapter of the movie. And they're now publishing articles like, Pennywise is surprisingly anti-queer in chapter two. This killer clown isn't the ally we thought he was. I'm sad to announce that Pennywise isn't gay or even an ally. And it's like, what are you even talking about? It's a fictitious clown that kills people. How pathetic are you people to where you need a murderous clown to be gay in order to feel validated? I get emails from my gay fans all the time with just paragraphs ranting about this type of stuff. It's basically, there's a part in the book, now in the movie, where a gay guy is pushed over the side of a bridge, I believe into a river, and then Pennywise murders him. So, okay, well, why does Pennywise murder him? Because that's what it does. It murders and it eats people. That's literally the point of the story, basically. But she finishes the article, I kid you not, by blaming this on Trump's America. Trump's America caused this. It doesn't matter that the story was published in 1986. Trump's America, no doubt. And I remember even laughing about this in 2017 with a friend of mine because he and I both went through a Stephen King phase and I remember seeing these articles saying that, oh, Pennywise the clown is gay. And I remember saying like, do you think they even read the book? You know, he kills a gay guy. And evidently, they did not read the book, otherwise they would have had um, better foresight. And also, I'm going to show you a picture of the woman who wrote this piece. But first, I just want you to take a second and just imagine what she looks like in your head. Just take a second, get a good picture. You ready? Here she is. Now remember, 
What's funny isn't how she looks, but rather how well we were able to predict how she would look. But notice how they're selective with what stories can be told based on how it fits their narrative. Notice how it doesn't matter whether a story or a character is relatable, like we just talked about a minute ago, what matters is that it fits the narrative. And so now we can start talking about the Joker movie that's coming out. Like we said earlier, it's been very well received by most, and it's actually somewhat rare for a comic book movie to be so critically acclaimed. Obviously, movies like uh, Avengers Endgame come out and they're, they receive good reviews because they're epic, right? I'm talking about critically acclaimed in the sense of good character development, good acting, good exploration of different themes, stuff like that, pretentious Hollywood, stuff like that. But the reason for it being so well received for a comic book movie is that it really isn't a comic book movie. Sure, it's based on the Joker, but they've said that they've taken no inspiration from any of the comics or previous screen adaptations of the Joker when making this film, so I wouldn't necessarily label it uh, a comic book movie. The point of the film is to explore an origin story for a character named Joker, and I, like most people, am excited for this movie, but we'll go through some of the criticisms from the social justice warriors now so that you can see what I'm talking about here. Um, this is one of the ones that's been spread around. This woman, Rachel Miller, says that she's bothered by the Joker movie because she doesn't want to see what drove the Joker insane. She doesn't want to watch a well-intentioned but unstable man get bullied until he turns into a mass murderer. She doesn't want to watch a man get rejected by women and then use that as an excuse for domestic abuse. She doesn't want to watch a man turn to crime as a result of unfortunate circumstances. She doesn't want to have sympathy for a man uh, best known for committing violent crime. She doesn't want this to be sold as a relatable story that can happen to anyone with a bad enough day, and she doesn't want to be around any of the, quote, lonely white boys who relate to it. Pause. The problem with this is that in the trailers for this film, which is all we have from which to extrapolate, it isn't just that he's had a bad day, it's that he's a middle-aged man who still lives with his mother, he's never amounted to anything, he's ostracized from society, not only that, he's beaten by people, he's physically beaten by people, he's isolated, he's got this spirit in him that seems to want to remain optimistic about things, and that's actually what the audience is witnessing, is that slowly disintegrate into a sort of nihilistic humor. So it's not that he's had a bad day, it's that he feels that his entire life has been without purpose and that he's isolated. And I'll probably do a video on that, to be honest, once the movie's actually released, like analyzing the character, perhaps why our society feels that they can relate to him so much. And that's the question for which these leftists have no serious answer. The recurring answer that I saw in the next piece that we'll go over is basically that white men feel entitled to everything and when they don't get it, they have a problem with it. Forget the collapse of the family structure. Forget how the negative effects of that disproportionately manifest in young men. Forget the family court system that screws over the fathers that do try and stay in the picture. Forget the, the opiate crisis. Forget being shamed for masculinity. Forget being made to believe in school by female teachers that you're defective and therefore need to be medicated. Forget the uphill battle young men face to attend higher education is ignored because the unwarrantedly vindictive um patriarchy people. Forget the homelessness. Our biggest problem is that we're entitled. We're a bunch of spoiled white brats. They've figured it out. Thank you. She finishes by saying that she doesn't think that there's ever going to be a good time to make a movie that paints mass murder as the conclusion of a society that isolates people and whose system fails them, etc., 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 because there's a bunch of armed white boys that are going to be inspired. This is the same as the violent video games cause mass shootings take. Let's look at the other one I saw. The author describes the film as a toxic rallying cry for incels. For those of you who aren't aware, incel stands for involuntary celibate. Men who identify as incels basically feel as if they're unable to attract women despite their attempts, and they often build up resentment towards women because of that. The biggest problem with painting this film as a film that's going to glorify incel violence is that there's virtually no evidence that suggests that there's any accuracy in that statement. I've combed through all the trailers for this film. In the first trailer, there's only one shot with an implied romantic interest, and they're sitting in a diner seemingly on a date or something, and she appears to be laughing at something that he said. In the other trailers, there's only two shots with an implied romantic interest, one in which there is a cordial conversation, and one in which he's actually kissing her. Now, we can speculate on whether or not that's actually happening or if it's in his schizophrenic delusion, whatever. There's virtually nothing that suggests that the cause of his nihilistic distraughtness is a lack of success with women. So that's just stupid. And let's also talk about the glorification of the violence, which we still don't know about since the movie isn't out yet. And the trailer was ambiguous, but the Joker's not a hero. You can sympathize with someone without it affecting your moral framework. We sympathize with Walter White and Breaking Bad, but we were all still very aware that he was a bad guy. They're drawing the conclusion of, oh, we can't allow people to sympathize with him because then they're going to act like him. That's really just a way to prevent people from talking about the issues that the man Arthur, his name is Arthur in the movie, experiences. Maybe we should talk about feeling isolated. Maybe we should talk about being rejected by society. Maybe we should talk about how our culture has embraced nihilism. Uh, no thanks. What are you, a mass murderer or something? But you can tell the intention of this writer almost immediately. She writes that the film tells the story of, quote, a clown for hire, an aspiring stand-up comedian who still lives with his ailing mother and resents the fact that the world won't pay him as much attention as he believes he deserves. 
Sound familiar? She's manipulating the plot of the film to fit her narrative. She goes on to write that it's propaganda for white men who feel rejected by the world and it risks glorifying incels and their violent behavior. She cites another person who said that there should be a three-day waiting period at the theater and others that basically say that the film is dangerous because it follows a disaffected white man. That's not a story that can be told because it doesn't fit the narrative. Like we said earlier, they don't want it to be talked about because they don't want or care about the problem being solved because men are the oppressors. So who cares if they feel displaced in society? The future is female, you idiot. That means if you're a man, you gotta yield. Yield to women. It's not that the future is male and female, ignoring all the other, other genders we have now. It's that the future is exclusively female. And they'll say, it's just a slogan. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it is. But when the same people who recite that slogan want to ignore men's issues, really makes one question their intention. Also, it's important to note that impartial critics have come out and said that they're wrong in their assessment of the film, big shocker there, and that the movie basically timelines his descent into becoming evil without absolving him of moral responsibility. But maybe the reason that this movie is being so well received is because it's an important movie for our society right now. Maybe it's a relatable story for a lot of men. We talked about relatable stories earlier. Same thing with song lyrics. I mean, people appreciate art that they can relate to. And if you got a country of young men that are excited for this movie because perhaps they feel as if they've been isolated or displaced, who the hell are you to condemn them for that? We have data. It's one thing if you claim things aren't, oh, this isn't going well because there was a guy man spreading on my train and I can't go out to bars wearing revealing clothing because I'm approached by men. I hate the patriarchy. That's one thing. But we can look at the male suicide rates, dropout rates, substance abuse rates. There is something wrong, something unprecedentedly wrong. And the fact that you would ignore that because it suits your narrative is disgusting. You people disgust me. There, there's, oh, okay, we'll talk about this now. There's a movie coming out entitled Queen and Slim, and it's about a black man and a black woman. They're out on their first date. They get pulled over by a white cop. He starts harassing them. Somehow he ends up pointing his gun at them and ordering them to the ground. The guy charges the police officer, takes his gun, and then he shoots him in self-defense. And then the movie is basically like a Bonnie and Clyde story about this couple being falsely accused of murdering the cop, even though it was self-defense. I mean, I watched the trailer. I don't know how it was self-defense. I think the guy thought that the cop was going to shoot the girl. So he took the cop's gun and then there's a shot of him pointing the gun at the cop and then shooting him and killing him. And I guess it's self-defense. Look, it's not my place to sit here and analyze the legality of fictitious shootings. Like, well, does anyone know if the movie takes place in a standard ground state? No. The point is that this film, which arguably glorifies violence against police officers that we know happens because we see it in the trailer, it's literally the plot of the movie. They kill a cop. Joker, on the other hand, is centered around a displaced man slowly manifesting mental illness and becoming nihilistic. No, 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 you can't do it. It's gonna glorify violence, okay? Fair, but I haven't heard a peep about this movie. In fact, the guy is the hero of that movie. Apparently, the Joker, you know, he's always seen as in the wrong in the Joker movie, but in this movie, Queen and Slim, the whole point of the movie is that they were in the right to shoot the police and it's the country and the media of that country that fail to understand that. Why is that an okay story to tell? Well, it's an okay story to tell because the left has to convince black people that the police are against them, that they're oppressed in this country to where even though they killed an officer in self-defense, the country would still be looking for them so that they can prosecute them. That's an okay story to tell because it fits the narrative. Doesn't matter that it can't be backed up statistically, it fits the narrative. The Joker movie about a depressed man? Hey, we can back this up statistically. Are you sure we can't run with it? Oh, we can't because God forbid the evil men are shown any sympathy. And there's an important distinction to be made here because people are going to want to take this out of context and make it look like I'm defending the actions that it's implied the Joker takes in the movie. No. Literally, all I'm saying is that men seem to be pretty lost in this country right now. We seem to be pretty depressed, pretty hopeless. Maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing to bring attention to that through a film that explores those themes. That is all. The purpose is to entertain. We can all watch these bad things happen to him. Maybe somebody didn't have their act together when they were younger, so they had to live with their mother throughout their 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever. Maybe someone can relate to that. Maybe no one will be able to relate to being beat up for twirling a sign outside, but we can all still watch that and think, wow, I'm sorry that happened to him. Even when he becomes violent, that's obviously where he loses us. No one's going to make excuses for that. The left thinks that people are going to make excuses for that because they exist in a bubble and they tend to be the ones within that bubble that make excuses for behavior and decisions. You know, it's not crime, it's poverty. It's not illegally crossing the border, it's seeking a better life. It's not killing a baby, it's helping the baby by not allowing it to be born to a mother that's too busy with Pilates to care for it, et cetera, et cetera. Is it just me or is it getting crazier out there? Yeah. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Why not? Maybe leave it a comment with your thoughts, why not? Maybe subscribe to the channel. Again, why not? What do you have to lose? Content's epic. About to break 100,000, that's epic. Jesus bobblehead, epic. You know? Epic.
But thank you so much for watching. That's also epic, and may God bless America, because God is epic, and America is epic. So I feel like there's some sort of relationship there between that. I'll stay up. I'll do the math. That's what I'll do. You go f have a nice evening. Do what you're going to do. I'll stay up. I'll do the math, because that's what I'm here for, right? So again, thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. Poof.